I'm Dr. Dennis Hartlieb and welcome to our course, Masking the Dark Tooth with Direct Resin. I'm sure that many of you have experienced the same issue that I have in practice. A patient presents to you with a single or multiple dark teeth. The single dark tooth or limited dark teeth are typically a result of a history of trauma and very often they've had root canal treatment as a result of the trauma. And very often these teeth can be treated with internal bleaching or walking bleach techniques. In fact, we've made some literature available on internal bleaching on the DOT website for those of you who would like a little more information on the materials and techniques. Sometimes though, these patients, they just might not be good candidates for walking bleach techniques. And they want to have their teeth brightened to match the surrounding teeth. These teeth may have posts internally that may be too risky to remove without damaging the root system, possibly causing fracture of the root. Also, if the tooth has a previous core buildup, it's imperative that that buildup is removed along the internal facial wall of the tooth structure so that the bleach solution can be most effective. Removing that buildup material can be difficult, and if the tooth was devitalized at a young age, the pulp chamber may be very large, and this can also be risky removing the old composite. Finally, there are situations where people have gone through the bleaching process previously for their dark tooth and maybe have not had great results and they may not want to reattempt the bleaching treatment. So these are the teeth that have been endodontically treated, but there are also people who have had trauma, the tooth has darkened, and the tooth is still vital. In these cases, there's no periapical breakdown, no lesion, so we wouldn't want to intentionally do a root canal just so we could internally bleach the tooth. So for these type of patients, we need to find a way to brighten the tooth without internal bleaching. Unfortunately, in my experience, external whitening on a dark tooth has really very limited effect. So we need to find a restorative solution for this dark tooth problem. Our third category of patients with dark teeth are patients that have taken medications like tetracycline that have turned their teeth dark. Patients like Jackie. In my experience, very often these teeth are unrestored and have no previous restorations or very limited dentistry. Because these teeth are otherwise healthy, I have found that these patients are very reluctant to have the teeth drilled down or prepped for crowns. These patients have tried bleaching their teeth and have had limited success, or if they have bleached, they're eager to have their teeth brighter or more consistent in the color, better than what they can get with bleaching. Now, for patients with dark teeth, we can absolutely block out the darkness using full coverage crowns, either with a metal-based restoration or with a more opaque zirconia material. For instance, in this case, the patient presented with previous failing PFM crowns to block out the tetracycline stained teeth. So our treatment solution was to use zirconia with layered porcelain. The zirconia absolutely blocks out the discolorations and allows the technician the opportunity to create bright, aesthetic appearing crowns. I have the right central incisor crown lifted so you can see the discoloration of the tooth underneath. But for those patients that want us to be more conservative in our dentistry, let's explore veneering of the teeth. There are two materials available today to consider when veneering teeth, porcelain and composite. As many of you know, the beauty of using porcelain for veneering teeth is the porcelain's inherent translucency. We've all heard about the contact lens effect related to porcelain veneers and how we can allow the undercolor of the tooth structure to shine through the porcelain to give depth to the restoration. Unfortunately though, this translucency can be a real problem when dealing with dark teeth. Now instead of using the translucency of the porcelain as an advantage, the ceramist has to block out or opaque the veneer to mask the undercolor of the tooth. Especially since a lot of our technicians are using lithium disilicate or Emacs for the porcelain. In my clinical experience, lithium disilicate tends to have a low value or darkness placed on teeth and can have an overall not bright appearance. Add to that, typically the ceramist is asked to block out the dark tooth in about a half a millimeter, about half or one third if they were creating a full coverage crown. This is why your lab technician will often tell their dentist that the teeth need to be prepped for full coverage so that they have more room to layer the materials to block out the dark tooth structure before putting on the overlaying porcelain. An alternative material that may be possible to use in the porcelain family is zirconia. Depending on the type of zirconia, zirconia can be created with an opaque core and then layered with traditional porcelains. 
but there are several downsides or potential downsides to using zirconia veneers when masking the dark tooth. My first concern is how stable is the bond of the zirconia veneer to the tooth structure. Now in my practice, I've bonded a lot of zirconia crowns with a very high success rate, but those are full coverage where I can grab a lot of tooth structure, not just veneering the surface. I have also bonded zirconia-based single-winged resin bonded bridges. Think Maryland Bridge without the metal. While I have only done a handful of these cases, the restorations have maintained really very well. Unfortunately, there aren't any studies that I have found showing long-term success of bonding zirconia veneers. If you're like me, you like to have research to support your clinical decisions. Having said that, based on my success with zirconia-based resin bonded bridges, and anecdotal stories from clinicians that I really respect, I expect that zirconia veneers would bind well, as long as the clinician is critical with their adhesive protocol. So zirconia in the right hands with the right lab technician might offer us an opportunity for veneering dark teeth. But here's the issue. Regardless of the material we choose to mask these dark teeth, we have to create more restorative space. That is, take away more facial tooth structure. We cannot block out a dark tooth with a typical veneer preparation of 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. So that means that the amount of enamel to bond to will be dramatically reduced. And if there is less enamel, that means that the bond strength of our restoration is going to be diminished. So should I expect the same success that I've experienced with my resin bonded bridges that are bonded to enamel to veneers that are bonded to mostly indentin? I'm not sure. When I'm dealing with teeth that I have to bond to a lot of dentin and limited enamel, here are my thoughts. Composite has more flex than porcelain. So as the tooth flexes under function, I believe that the composite should maintain its bond better to dentin than porcelain, meaning less marginal breakdown, less marginal leakage. Also, if there's marginal breakdown or if the patient has subsequent recession after the veneers have been placed, it is possible to add to the composite veneers to block out the now visible dark tooth structure. Adding composite to porcelain veneers is hard enough to block out dark tooth structure at the gum line is really, really difficult, if not impossible. Also, another reason that I like using composite instead of porcelain is that I think that it's just easier to block out the discoloration because when using composite, we can wash the block out as we layer. Now, don't get me wrong, Blocking out dark teeth is really difficult regardless of which material you use. I just find it more predictable if I'm not crowning the tooth to use composite instead of porcelain in the veneering technique. The three reasons that I prefer to use composite over porcelain if I'm going to veneer a dark tooth is one, the reliance of dentin instead of enamel and the better bondability of composite to the dentin surface. Two, the repairability of composite if there should be marginal breakdown or recession at the gingival margin. And three, for me in my hands, the greater predictability in the final aesthetic outcome using composite. In today's program, I'll share with you step-by-step step the techniques that I use to veneer dark teeth with composite. After we finish the presentation, we'll head over to the hands-on portion so that you can practice the techniques that you've just learned.